All right, so what we're going to be learning about here is bottom navigation. Bottom navigation is, well, I think when you see it, what you're going to notice is it reminds you, I would say, more of some iOS apps. Maybe because I've worked on some iOS apps before and it reminds me of them. But it's navigation that sits at the bottom of the page. Usually it's denoted by icons, maybe accompanied by some kind of like label text. Usually it's just icons, and you could shift between three, four screens for what you need to do. So as you can see up here, I already have the imports up here. We go ahead and erase these semicolons because let's not erase that because I don't really like semicolons. We'll take these out here and let's get moving on here. So we're going to come on in. We're going to make our bottom navigation right here. Okie dokie. And this is what's going to wrap everything that's going to go inside. Come on in and actually let's, I should set this up so it like auto indents for me. It'll probably happen when the series is over to be honest. We'll have a bottom navigation action here. And these are the things that are, that's not what I wanted. These are the things that are going to appear at the bottom, as we're going to see here in just a moment. Let's make, let's make three of these. Because if you have like one or two, it's like, why are you doing this? Three or four seems to be kind of a, the healthy region. Although I think three, especially for smaller screen sizes, is typically the best way to go. So it's coming to here, and we're going to have a label. Let's do recents. And this is going to be very similar to if you went to Material UI and looked at it as well. Because I think this is a simple enough example where I could just kind of rip this out and just kind of jam it in here and show you visually what's going on. Now let's go ahead and let's save this and see how it looks now. Eh, there's nothing much really coming up right here. So let's go ahead and keep on going with this and then see what else we have to add to actually flush this out because sometimes you can add the material UI components and you get something right away. Other cases, you kind of have to add a bit more detail to kind of get stuff going here. And so what we have now, let's, let's just add some icons here. I have the restore icon here. We're going to come down and just copy and paste this. Actually, we want to Finish that right there. And for this, let's see, last one is location. Favorite icon. We're saving again. We can see we have these now. So this is kind of cool. Awesome. So this looks kind of boring. So let's kind of spice this, spice this up a little bit. So let's come up here and use the make styles. We're going to make root. Let's do width, I don't know, let's just give it 500. And a background color, what's this one I have saved right here? I think this is it. So we're gonna bring this on down into here because I think it's important also to kind of see what's going on kind of in the background. And I think that's only illuminated if you give it some kind of background color. Let's just come in here because I know we're going to add some more stuff.
we can see that this is gray right here. Now if we wanted to make this like 400, we would do it like that. We'll bump it back up to 500 because why not? You ultimately want this to be flexible to the width of the page. And this will obviously, since it's bottom navigation, will be sitting down here, but for our purposes, this is just fine. So we have this right here, but what if we wanted to do something where, you know, we kind of wanted to toggle, set, move between stuff. Well, you may have guessed it. We're going to need to use some kind of hook. Um, what we're going to do is use state to navigate between these different bottom navigation actions down here. So let's go ahead and set this up. We'll have value and we'll have set value. And this is interesting here because if you notice some of the other videos I've done, you have the label and sometimes you have text sitting in here. We have zero, which when I first saw this, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Because when I saw how they wrote the uh, the way of how you could change this, when you click it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. So let me come down into here, and we'll keep that at the top. We'll say value equals value, which is identical to what they have. All right, so now that it's set at zero, recent is appearing, so you need the value to be set to something to you know reflect what's going on here. We click these things, they're obviously responding but nothing is updating. Let's come in here and this is kind of where it gets interesting. I'll show you what they have. So they have event, new value, and I'll walk you through this here. set value new value and so what this is doing is when we hit the on change there's an event that has to happen and we're sending a new value up with it and when that new value obviously you know gets to here it's going to take whatever numeric value from what we click and then set that is the most current value. I think it looks a little weird if you wanted to make a handler up here it would look something like this. So if we wanted to do const handle change that would look like, I don't, I don't always believe in doing it right in there. New value, you would come over and we'll rip this out right here. And so then this would be and that would be let's see the actually yeah that would be wrong There we go. I forgot that. And so, I mean, maybe it saves space. Maybe it's easier just to have the, you know, the on change. Everything's put right in line here. But I prefer this because I like having my functions grouped together, my states grouped together. Because as you have more and more and more things regulating the entirety of a page and application, it is way easier to group your variables, your functions, your state together, and then you return. And then you have the actions and logic here reflecting, and there's not some outlier that's just existing in your like business logic down here, your um, visual uh, output or your view, I should say. It's kind of late for me, at least it's been a long day, so I'm just rambling on. But this is how you make the bottom navigation. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and yeah. All right, so in this section, it's going to be very short. As we're clicking up here, we could see when we click something, we get a label. Sometimes though, our icons, what we choose, what others make us choose, will not always work. So sometimes we're going to want just built in by default when the page loads some kind of explanation of what's going on here.
and that's very easy to do as well. So we're going to come up here, show labels. By default, it's true. And you could have some kind of view state up here to toggle back and forth. I don't know why you would want to. I think you'd either want it to either be true or false for the entirety of the app. But now, when you click on them, yeah, the, the font increases a little bit, they pop out, but this is a way to give more guidance to your user if you feel that's the best thing to do for your product.